after finding a nice, useful, and totally unconcerning data visualization, you may be wondering if it's possible to extract the raw data from that visualization so you can use it in your own research or project. While some visualizations offer a data download feature, others not so much and can be a little bit trickier to scrape the data from, but it's still possible. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can analyze a few different visualizations and we'll walk through whether or not we can extract the raw data from them and when you can, how to do it quickly and easily. If you're new here, you may have heard of screen scrapers, which let you scrape websites by pointing and clicking on the visual components on the web pages. But what do we do with charts? The data is somewhat invisible and presented to us in terms of lines and visualizations and graphics and colors. We can't really tell a screen scraper how to get data out of a chart. So guess what? Like every other video I make, we're not going to use a screen scraper. So let's talk about a few different scenarios where you may try to be scraping data from a visualization and I'll let you know if you can do it or not. So the first scenario where it's clearly not going to work is if the visualization is presented as an image, like a PNG or a JPEG file, you're not gonna be able to get data out of this. Don't try. You could write some really hacky solution to reverse engineer the image, but it's not gonna be worth it. Just stop and move on to somewhere else. The good news though is that after around maybe 2013 or 14, the practice of publishing data visualizations as an image has gotten less popular and less fashionable. Now the new craze is having interactive visualizations which are often powered by JavaScript. And what that means for us is that the front end, the website, is a JavaScript client and it communicates with the back end which usually sends structured JSON data to the front end. And that front end then draws the pretty graphs and makes it so we can hover and see different things and click and interact with the graph. That makes it a very good candidate for scraping if the visualization we're working with is built in that way. Here's an example from Google Finance. We look at this visualization and we can see there's historical data here for this ticker and we can compare them and click around. So it's interactive and it's JavaScript. So it looks like it's sending back structured data to our browser, right? So how do we get this data? Well, to do this, we need to open up our network developer tools in Google Chrome or whatever browser you're using. You just right click anywhere on the page and hit inspect. This will open up the toolkit and then click on the network tab so we can start looking at the actual network data that is sent and received. So now when I start interacting with the visualization, I'll see my browser show me all of the raw data that Google is sending to my browser. And it's a bit tricky to kind of find it in the browser. I like to sometimes sort by size and descending order so I can see the largest payloads up front, and then those usually have the data. So I click around and I can see this looks like the data Google is using to populate the chart, but this doesn't look like anything I've seen before. It's definitely not a JSON file. It's definitely not a CSV file. So if I just kind of scroll through here, I can see it's some proprietary format that Google is using to populate their visualization. So. I picked this example to show you of when a website doesn't want to be scraped, they will do things like this and obfuscate the data sending back to the browser. They have special client code in JavaScript that can sort of decode or work with this format that Google has made proprietary and does not share. When you see something like this, again, I'm sorry, I think it's better just stop and give up and try to find another visualization. This is proprietary, so trying to decode this, a little risky from a legal perspective, but more importantly, you're just gonna spend a lot of time wasting and then there's no guarantee Google may just change this tomorrow and your code will break. So this isn't going too well, but maybe the third time's the charm. Let's check out this similar visualization we saw to the first one and scroll around. It looks pretty modern. I can hover over the stats. I don't see any data download buttons. So my next option is to say, well, hey, maybe I can scrape the data unofficially. So in order to do this, I do what I just tried doing with Google. We open up the network tools from the developer console, right click, hit inspect, click the network tab. And I don't really see anything here after scrolling around. There's not a lot of interactivity, which makes me think that this website sends the JSON once when I load the page and then just renders it after. So to capture that network traffic, I need to have this tool open while the page is loading. So I simply just refresh the web page and now I can watch all the network traffic come in and to find where the actual chart data is, 
I'm going to go to XHR over here, which sends the dynamic stuff that gets sent to my browser, and sort descending by size. Now I can see the largest kind of JSON data files that were sent, and it looks like one of these on the top is going to have the raw JSON data. And I can actually go ahead and reaccess this URL in the browser, even though it's unofficial and technically this may not be legitimate use of their site because you're accessing this outside of their client, we can do it here and just look at the raw data. So there you go. Now I showed you how to get the raw data behind these charts and you can see how this JSON is organized. It looks pretty easy to work with. What's even easier too is to just browse this data inside of Google Developer Tools and actually parse the JSON out for me. So I can see this is structured like a really big list and then each list contains a data point that shows up on the chart. So I can see, for example, here, this tells me the state, this tells me the data, and then I can see which day it is. That's the X axis. So I could download this and write my own program to parse this and make my own visualization now. And because this is such a common pattern, you can apply this to literally any website. Again, assuming it's not an image and they don't try to obfuscate the data, then this approach should work. But what if you don't feel like futzing around these Google developer tools and having to soar and look for where the valuable JSON is. If you have a lot of sites to scrape, this may get time intensive. So this is why I've created a free tool that will do this work for you. Link in the description. It works with something called a HAR file, which is a big file that has a history of all your web browser traffic in it. So in Google Chrome, you can generate this very quickly. Just click this button called export HAR here, and it'll download a HAR file, put it on my desktop, and then I go to the free tool, link in the description, and I can just drag and drop this file here, and it'll automatically look for where any interesting JSON is that it finds and group together similar patterns, and it'll bring the highest payloads to the top, just like I did in the Chrome developer tools. So here I can see it found that the what I was looking at, the states curves and the county curves are right here in JSON format. I can click the disk icon and download the raw data, just like we did in Google Chrome, and I can have my data very quickly without fiddling too much with a bunch of unnecessary network traffic. This tool only shows me JSON responses. And with every free tool comes an upsell. So I know a lot of you guys who are more on the developer end are totally happy with the JSON. You just want to plug it into a program and play with it. But there's another half of you who I know are more business oriented or less technical, sort of like me, and you just want to get this data in a quick consumable format like a CSV file, meaning you can load it into Excel or put it into Google Sheets or a number of other programs that work with CSV files. So in order to convert this JSON into CSV format, there's a feature here for premium Steve C data users called the parse button. You'll see it right here. And this will take any JSON response that you'll get from a visualization and auto magically translate it or transform it into a series of collections, which you can then download each collection as a CSV format. So that big list of data points we saw in JSON format is quickly converted into a CSV file I can just download from the platform. I can then even reopen this file in Excel and just quickly make my own charts here, just like the visualization we saw on the website. And before I let you go, there are just a few quick legal disclaimers I want to warn you about when it comes to scraping data like this. Just because you manage to download it to your computer doesn't mean it's yours or you have the right to redistribute this data or claim it as your own or use it for commercial purposes in your app just because it's a bunch of numbers. It could still have copyright protection, such as stock price quotes, I believe are copyright protected, as crazy as that sounds. So once you have this data, it's probably fine if you just want to use it for your own personal project, uh, for a school research assignment, that's totally fine, just as long as you credit your source when you submit your project. If you're trying to build an app, or you run a commercial blog or something, or even if you just post this publicly anywhere, you really want to check with the data provider, check their terms of service. Usually if you just credit the website uh, if, and your blog post or YouTube video, you'll be fine. What you don't want to do is like go and make a stock trading platform and rely on scraped data. One, it'll probably break. Two, you'll be able to figure out that you, where you got the data from and they can sue you if you ever gain any traction. Three, it's not ethical. And four, did I say it's going to break already? Because uh, all these providers will change the way their data is consumed at any given time when you're doing anything unofficial like scraping. So these approaches are really more like just getting your hands on the data once. I wouldn't recommend relying on reaccessing those endpoints I showed you because they could change at any point. And also, you're also free to ask for permission from the website owner if it's a smaller site. They may say, hey, this is really cool. 
here's permission, and they may also link to you. So that's always an option. But that's it. Please like if you learned something, subscribe to see me scrape more sites, and let me know in the comments what you think of this. Did this work for a website? Do you have other websites with graphs and charts and visualizations you want to see me access? Let me know in the comments, and I'm happy to make more videos. Thank you so much for watching, and stay data-driven.